depends on depends on what frame of reference you're uh, you're referring to. I mean, I mean, we, we've had uh, we've had ACPI support for quite some time. Um, I mean, right now, like this is this is pretty much ACPI controlled um, as it as it stands. So. Um, might say so. Might say so. I mean, it, it, well, well, well. Also, though, I'm only running on the external battery. The only I'm only running on. Cell, uh, just uh, just because I, I, for some reason, uh, my internal. Every time I try to put an internal battery in, it it's, uh, it won't recognize it anymore. Um, even even if it's an even if it's an official one, you know, with the with the signed you know signature and everything. Um, no, the, uh, the 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 embedded controller doesn't like it. tried it. Uh, NVIDIA supports a little weird too. So let's see. Yeah, so I, I don't so I, I don't I don't have slides for any of this. Uh, this is all pretty much uh, showing browser tabs and things of that nature. So you get the, so you get the there we go. I won't have to angle myself a bit better. <laughs> Do I need to hook up the uh, hook up a microphone for myself or anything? You know, especially for the video and all that. As long as you're plugged in HDMI, it should. No, I don't. I don't. I, I don't have audio on this. I, I'm not. I don't intend to have. Yeah, audio yeah. No, that's fine. Uh, then I would just say turn that on. Like this, because the screen is going to be in the way. I must even want to move that a little bit, but I don't know. Well, that, well, then the, the, the camera might have an issue, but we'll see. Well, well, you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see about that, actually. Um, well, we just have to. I might, I might just have to do like this, you know, real low, and it just, nah, no, nah, no, nah, that won't be necessary. I just have to, I, as long as I get, I'm able to see that, because, because I, I don't have, I don't have the displaced mirror handle. Okay, that's good, but I, I can aim up the screen like this. Yeah, yeah, that might be the best. We're gonna have to deal with this <laughs> for for the in-person folks. I, I don't think uh, I don't think any of the remote folks are gonna have have any idea what just what just happened, or or maybe they do. I don't know. We'll see. So um, yeah, welcome to welcome to how to well I shouldn't say how to, but running your favorite Linux distribution on the FreeBSD Linux Elator. My name's Charlie. I am a FreeBSD committer out of all things. Um, out of the many hats that I wear, but um, yeah, this this was something that um, so FreeBSD obviously is not Linux, but it's a Unix-like operating system, and uh, you know descended from the Berkeley software distribution of Research Unix, but uh, you know after many many iterations later, we have a uh, at least in FreeBSD we have the Linux binary compatibility stack whatever you want to call it, 
So uh, we, 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 within FreeBSD, we like to call it the Linux Elator. Um, I'm not going to explain why, or, or should I explain why. So this is the handbook chapter kind of describing the, the basics of it. So in FreeBSD, we have, we, we kind of take documentation seriously, at least the, at least the official looking documentation. We do also have a wiki, but um, even to my admission, our, uh, our wiki is not nearly as good as Arch's wiki. So we, we should strive to be as good as Arch's wiki. Uh, we're, 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 we're trying to get there. So, but yes, today we are we are discussing the uh, the FreeBSD Linux and later how to actually run stuff on it. Um, just give just give all of you as a little a little tour, a little overview. Um, maybe maybe we can figure out why we will we would want to do that. You know, especially if we are stuck with FreeBSD or 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 curiosity gets the best of us for that matter. So yes, handbook. This is uh, this is handbook chapter ten. Linux binary compatibility. You can, uh, if you want to pull that up on the FreeBSD website, it's just it's literally just handbook. Handbook should be the first link on the FreeBSD website, and then find chapter ten, and uh, just kind of gives you the overview. Um, however, though, I do want to I do want to introduce an elephant in the room. Uh, so this has nothing to do with uh, with uh, with the Linux later per se, but uh, you know something that I don't necessarily like about uh, about you know submitting stuff to conferences is that sometimes you have to submit stuff out so far in advance that that then you know some stuff that comes up later ends up becoming much higher priority as in this so in, in the FreeBSD ports collections which is where I commit my stuff uh, or or the area that I work in um, yes we have a liability within the within uh, Python land as in uh, yes Python has this new pep 517 thing uh, you, you know, new package standard, and this has kind of taken over my uh, my priority list when it comes to uh, FreeBSD work. So, um, yeah, what you're about to see when it comes to the Linux layer stuff, yes, it's going to fail worse than Windows 98. I, I know it for a fact. I, I actually did some uh, did some last minute, uh, you know, last minute whatever is whatever you want to call it, and yes, uh, yes, I, I made sure it failed. Uh, so there you go. Yeah. So th this has been taken over most of my FreeBSD life, and um, and 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 it's still ongoing. And the longer we wait to uh, the longer we wait to work on this part of the ports framework, uh, the more of a liability that we're going to have when it comes to uh, updating Python stuff. And Python stuff's pretty important. So that's the elephant in the room, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna belabor it anymore. So. Yes, so this is the Linux Elator FreeBSD wiki page. Uh, hopefully, a little bit more technical description, you know, technical details. Yes, in uh, in 12, in version 12 of oh. FreeBSD, um, if you run uname, it will report that it's Folks it for a Linux kernel version of 3.2.0, but in, I think, 13 as well, but uh, certainly in current, which is actually what I run, uh, uname will report Linux kernel 4.4.0. Um, kind of arbitrary values, uh, you can actually change them in uh, in your sysctl, uh, depending on depending on if your programs that you're going to run or whichever libraries that that you need to run actually care about this stuff. And and, and actually in previous um, previous iterations of the Linux later, we actually did bump we we actually did had to bump up uh, bump the version up a couple times because I think KDE or some something I I think it was cute was actually checking the uh, checking the Linux kernel version, or else it actually refused to run. So we, we had to we had to do that a couple times. But yes, it, this is configurable within a sysctl that I can't remember. They off the top of my head what which particular one it is, but it's in there somewhere. So yeah, so status you know development well everything's in development still. Um, some of this stuff might be a little bit outdated on this wiki page. Especially, I, I haven't put anything regarding what my demo is about, but you're about to see it. <laughs> uh, I did present this last uh, last week at the at BSD Can. That was a virtual co virtual conference, kind of a different side of the coin. Um, really, was just more the Arch side, but whatever. So that's the that's the Linux Elator uh, wiki page, and then so. 
before, so Linux jails. So there's yes. there's a couple different ways to actually skin the cat. Back in the to, command line as well. When it comes to Linux earlier stuff running on modified Linux binaries. So in the FreeBSD ports collection, we have we have an entire category called Linux, but that's a virtual category. It's pretty much it's pretty much repackaged CentOS all... seven packages, like repackaged binary CentOS seven RPMs. And in fact, I will show you over here. Uh, and I should probably go back to there. We go. Yeah. So this is <laughs> this is uh, Linux base dash C seven. Well, emulator slash Linux underscore base dash C seven. C seven means means uh, CentOS seven. And uh, yeah. So if you if you wanted to install, you know, using binary packages in FreeBSD, you could you could install um, as long as as long as we have it in the ports collection. You can install um, you can install a few things. You know, from the CentOS stuff, and of course we repackage it. But this Linux base dash C7 thing, this is this is essentially, you know, the base set of CentOS packages that you would need to run a CentOS user land. Um, you know, without having to do some crazy some crazy stuff. What I, what I'm going to show later is is what I kind of mean by um, crazy stuff. So yes. By default, you have CentOS 7. We, we used to have CentOS 6, but that was removed because CentOS 6 is old. And uh, so this, uh, this what we'll do, you know, of course, you know, we've got a collection of uh, CentOS 7 packages here, uh, you know, programs, libraries, things like that. Uh, this make file, so this FreeBSD ports make file, uh, you know, it's going to fetch all these. It's going to essentially repack them. But also, also kind of remove some files in here. So there's, you know, it does some more stuff. Post extract uh, has to pack some stuff because, of course, we're not actually running in Linux. We're running in FreeBSD. Uh, whatever. There's a there's a part uh, that I may have. There we go. Yeah. So remove. So some files are going to have to get deleted because, or else they're going to conflict with uh, with how how FreeBSD operates. You know, some some files get removed. You know, you, some uh, you know etc dot password that gets removed, or else that's going to conflict. Of course, if you um if if you run it like this. So I, I've run I've run this in the past. I don't have it running anymore um, because I'm using the different uh, the the other way now. But in the past, when I did run this, uh, yes, oh. Intel uh, Intel Cordis, um, which is the electronic design um, software. I had to use that for a class one time. Um, yes, it, it did indeed run. Um, it, it ran. I did what I had to do in it, and I probably got rid of it because uh, Quartus is a few gigabytes large. Uh, the the only the only issue is that I forgot to install the uh, I forgot to install the GNOME themes because because it's a GTK program. I forgot to install the GNOME themes, so like so it looked uh, it, it looked kind of crappy. You know, no no themes, not even at Weta for that matter. It, it just looked like. You know your old, uh, old you know gray, windowsy looking thing, um, but that that was my fault. But yeah, so that so that also means that if you're gonna, if you're gonna have you know like, if you want to have you know like something that looks kind of nice, you know also make sure to install your themes and things like that because that's also kind of separated despite maybe being in the same uh, file system uh, root or whatever. So yeah, so this is yeah, so this is just uh, you know. If you if you want to run the CentOS uh, user land without doing crazy stuff, this this Linux based thing you're going to have to have you're going to have to have it installed, and, and then and then let's say you want to put Sublime Text 4. This is the Sublime Text 4 uh, port. Of course, this one this one I believe is is a straight repack. Like so, Sublime I think only distributes the uh, the binary. Uh, Linux binary, of course, and uh, we're not we're not doing anything special with this one. We're just downloading it, extracting it, and then repacking it into our package format. So so the binary is still and still a CentOS or, or Linux unmodified Linux binary, and uh, in and in theory, because I haven't tested this one because I don't use Sublime Text, but in theory, if you install it, and as long as the desktop file is desktop files are associated properly or or if you run it for the command line, um, and if, especially if you use X, the, uh, the the display environment variable that should carry over, just like how it did with uh, when I ran in, 
over in uh, Quartus, and you have a working Sublime Text. So that's the, but I personally don't like to really use CentOS or really any, any hard versioned uh, distributions because reasons. Uh, I don't need to get into those. But pretty much, pretty much that's the overall theme. You're just, for, for the CentOS stuff, you're, you're just downloading the, the existing uh, you know, package software or package and you're just repacking them and then you install them again. When you're when you're ready to do so, so that's that. That this is the this is probably the the, the safer way to do it, but also m maybe a little bit more limiting, or, or or something like that. So now, now we get to so the the next part is is actually what I mean by you know it's going to fail worse than Windows 98. Actually, no, it has failed worse than Windows that worse than Windows 98. It will continue to fail worse than Windows 98 when I keep not working on it. So what we're going so this is what I've been working on. So we have a port of Pac-Man. If for, for those who are not familiar, that is the Arch Linux package manager. We have a port of Pac-Man in, in the FreeBSD ports collection. Um, I'm in the process of uh, like I said still working on it. This is the this is the FreeBSD fabricator instance. Uh, we, we like to use this for uh, of course code review and, and things like that. But, uh, but it's also kind of an excuse for me to just get stuff out of my out of my uh, development overlay because that gets very stuffy very quickly. Uh, so yes, uh, update. So the the current one in our tree is it's still stuck at like 5.1.3 or something like that, very old. Um, and uh, and right now I think it installs stuff if you configure it properly into a separate hierarchy, and that's whatever. So. Yeah, so this this one uh, this one yes, I'm still running 6.0.1. Um, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be reworking the details of this, but essentially, if you want to run, you know, your favorite Linux user Linux distribution user land, probably the easiest way to do so is to port that Linux distributions package manager, and then set those. Um, set the official repositories for that Linux distribution, like set those up in the package manager, such that when you go to install packages or update packages or whatnot, it pulls directly from that rather than some rando source that you that, that, that you found maybe like two minutes ago. Uh, and I believe we have, there we go, yeah, so Linux jails, so this, this wiki page actually describes, you know, it, it's been done before with actually with Debian and Ubuntu. Um, they have this program called Dev Bootstrap, which essentially kind of you know bootstraps a user land, um, mostly for Linux. But we, a couple folks got it working for uh, for the FreeBSD Linux later. So there's a, there's kind of a little step by step guide. You have to you know you got to install it, of course. Uh, you got to you know, it bootstrap it somewhere somewhere safe. Um, somewhere safe that doesn't necessarily conflict with uh, with the CentOS one, if you have the CentOS user land in there, and then you got to set up. Uh, you need to set up a, a few mounts because, of course, in in the uh, in the FreeBSD Linux later, you know, well, in Linux, the um, the special mounts are a little bit different. You know, like proc is different in FreeBSD than Linux. You know, stuff like that. Um, but, but 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 most importantly, since as you can see. You're going to be ch rooting into this environment. So, what I mean by the whole, you know, you have to do a little bit of crazy stuff. So, ch rooting is part of it. And then once you ch root, it's like, okay, where, where's dev? Where's the dev? DevFS? Where's tempfs? Where's procfs? You know, like general stuff that a lot of Linux programs are going to expect when you run in a in a Linux environment. And if you don't have them, they're just going to be like, what the hell? So you need to once you ch when you set up a ch root, you need to make sure they're they're mounted somehow, and they have it mounted under this compat Ubuntu hierarchy thing, and um, and then you you kind of ch root you ch root into it, um, run a shell in this case, and then and then once you're in in theory, you run apt or whatever whatever you want to run, just as usual, and uh, so that's the. That's how they did it with Debian and Ubuntu. I'm doing it with Arch because I like Arch. That's where I came from. That's why, 
you know, we're, we're, we're updating Pac-Man and, and having this uh, capability, which is, which is what I got. So this is, this is still a bit incomplete. Again, I'm still, I still got to rework this because there are some snags that I ran into when it comes to actually packaging this thing, uh, packaging it both for, you know, if, if someone just wanted to run Pac-Man, you know, as just randomly versus running Pac-Man configured for, you know, configured for managing the Arch Linux user land. Uh, so that that's where the flavor thing comes in, but we don't need to get into that. Um, yeah, there's we got rid of some stuff. We had to add some stuff, whatever. Um, so, what? But basically, once once you do kind of get Pac-Man, you know that that Pac-Man, you know, installed and and whatnot, configure your uh, configure your official Arch Linux repositories, things like that. Key ring. That's another story in and of itself. You can pretty much uh, kind of skim through, of course, the Arch Linux install guide, kind of skip the whole, skip all of this stuff. The, the important bit, once you once you get Pac-Man properly configured, select your mirrors. So we're not going to be porting Packstrap. Packstrap, of course, that's only on the ISO. But as long as you, you can run Pac install base, you only need to install the base group. And that's that's basically the Arch Linux equivalent of that Linux underscore base thing that we saw earlier. Once you once you got that, you know, you get your you get the unmodified Arch Linux pack Arch Linux binary Pac-Man, you know, unmodified Arch Linux, whichever other packages are in that base category, and uh, and then there you go. And uh, so now, let me switch over to the terminal if I can get my pointer. Pointed properly, so oh, I should probably increase the size. Can everybody see that? Okay. So I see it rooted. Um, right now we're running as root um, because uh, you know again this goes back to the crazy stuff here. Uh, you know ch root ch root when in, in this environment can be a little bit weird and. Um, that's why we're ch rooted as root, but I'm going to actually switch over to my personal account right now using su. So as you can see, that is uh, that is NeoFetch. It's hanging for some reason. Doesn't really matter. I'll just cut it out. But uh, yeah, so as you can see, uh, the operating system is indeed reported as Arch Linux AMD64, and its kernel version 4.4.0. Yeah, yeah, my machine's been up for that long, um, I think. Uh, you can see how many Pac-Man packages I've got, and we're running the C shell, and then it kind of hangs every time. So that won't get to you. Um, and then, just to really show it, actually, I'll clear this out. Here's your uname. Yes, so uh, it, it's running the FreeBSD branded Linux kernel uh, 4.4.0. And uh, yes, it's FreeBSD 14.0 current, as you can see there. So unfortunately, so my, my main motivation for actually doing all this stuff was actually to get Zoom to work. Uh, that, that didn't work out so well right now, um, primarily because once you're in the ch root environment, you can't share the, uh, you can't share the X dis display variable. Uh, that, that's kind of a problem before you even get into trying to execute the binary. And then, and then you get a whole more slew of problems later on, but I think the biggest thing is you, you can't even, if you want to run graphical stuff in a CH root environment compared to that CentOS, that, that CentOS thing, yeah, you have to figure out another way to, uh, you know, maybe run a shadow, shadow X session or, or, or whatnot and kind of do some, again, crazy stuff. So we're not going to be doing that today, but I do have I, I do have a, a leftover demo that I did last week, uh, which was actually compiling a, uh, an AUR package, that, um, which is actually a library, so I can't really give you a live demo of it running, but I can give you a live demo of it compiling, and um, we might be getting some awkward silence there. So uh, feel free to troll me or troll back, or if we have any indications of remote uh, participation, um, remote smoke signals, actually no smoke signals in any form, um, that would be nice. So, yeah, so the, uh, we're going to compile a, a, an AUR package here. Where 
is it? Yeah, so this uh, Chromium Embedded Framework, I think, this this thing. You know, it's, it, it, it might, it, it's going to take a few minutes, but we're gonna we're gonna run make pkg. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna install it, and um, here we go. Of course, we gotta install some dependencies. So that right there, that right there. If we scroll up, um, that was the Pac-Man. Come on, where's my pointer at? You scroll up. Yeah. So Pac-Man is prompting me that we have to install CMake because we don't have CMake yet. Uh, we already have all this stuff downloaded, so it was just a matter of, of extracting everything and installing it and, it, and it worked. So this was all entirely, that was all entirely the Linux Pac-Man binary. So it's still extracting right now. It's, it's gonna take a couple minutes to extract because it's, um, it's not that large, but it's large. Uh, let's see here. So if I also, let's open up a new window. So this is now, we're now back in FreeBSD. This, this is the FreeBSD one, and you can see you name. Yeah, this is FreeBSD. And and in fact, I'll actually show you the while we're waiting for it to extract. Um, let's see, just to show the difference. So this is the FreeBSD. This is the FreeBSD Pac-Man. Yeah, as you can see, the uh, you know it's a FreeBSD ELF binary. Blah 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 blah. So now, if we compare it with That is now the Linux ELF binary. So, you know, sometimes sometimes you might have to run brand ELF to uh, you know on an on an existing Linux binary just to actually get the uh, just to tell FreeBSD that hey, this is indeed a Linux binary. Don't run it with the FreeBSD libc or anything like that. So let's go back over here. Now we've uh, we've started to compile. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So there's the there's our CMake. Uh, CMake process, as you can, uh, where, where did it go? There's one part that actually says that we're running, that we're using GCC 12, somewhere around here. Uh, oh well, so we're, we are indeed using uh, GCC, the, the, the Linux binary of GCC 12 to build this thing, and um, yeah, it's going. In fact, if you can see the, if you actually look, well, you're not going to be able to see that. That's too, <laughs> that's a bit uh, too small. But maybe we can do this. Or no, CC1, it would be CC1 plus in this case. So, so uh, e even though, even though it says, you know, it's that thing, that's because, you know, it's the, it's in the CA true, but the real path is in that compat Compat Arch Linux hierarchy thing, and uh, and, and it's going. And in fact, let's go with the. Yeah. yeah. There's your compile command there. And uh, yeah, that's your compile command. And I think we're only running only one, running one job. I'm not sure. But uh, while, while we wait, do we have any? Uh, do we have any? Yeah. Um, it, it's so it's actually running natively. There, there's no there's no virtual machine involved. So yes, there is a bit of uh, it, it, it's essentially just system call mapping. So the system calls are fairly similar, but there are still there are still some differences in be, between them. So it's just a matter Apps of like this. the uh, mapping Linux system calls where we can to the to the FreeBSD equivalents. It's not a uh, it's not a complete um, mapping. So certain things will continue to not work until until you know the folks actually working in the base system actually implement them but uh, but they've been making quite a bit of progress because they also they also kind of experiment with um, with different users I think one of them runs like Alpine or something like that um, I, I, I know like the, the, the folks who wrote the uh, who wrote that wiki page about the about the dev bootstrap they are of course running Ubuntu and Debian so they so they've kind of just been, Based on the dis the user lands that they've been running, they've just been kind of just implementing the uh, implementing the mapping kind of one by one 
as they as they run it. So okay, looks like we finished uh, we finished building. So it built successfully, and it and uh, and it's going to package. Uh, it's going to package itself into an actual uh, Linux or Arch Linux package. I think I turned off uh, compression here from back when I still ran Arch Linux on this machine. But um, yeah, it's packaging. And uh, that might take a couple minutes too. Oh, here we go. It's going to run strip. Da, 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 da. Not too interesting. But uh, any further thoughts? <laughs> any further thoughts? Any further questions? Or, or uh, whatever you got? What's up? It's, I mean, the the proper answer is whatever you want to make of it. But personally, my use cases have been to run, you know, proprietary software, software that um, is not easily ported to FreeBSD per se. You know, be, because of the difference in system calls and differences, especially differences in, let's say, like libc, you know, things like that. Um, I so Zoom was not the only program that I that, that I actually that I tried to get running. Um, the Discord client. The, the, the desktop Discord client is also a proprietary thing that uh, that they only package for Linux and, and things like that. Um, certain other uh, certain other at least source available programs, uh, you know, they they were especially when it comes to scientific software or ham radio software or, or, or software written by folks who are not exactly software experts or those well versed in software engineering or building or whatnot and uh you know so they, they they might be they might have only written their program of course to solve their own problem with their own operating environment in mind they didn't really think of anything else so they might they might have only written it with that version of ubuntu that they're running in mind and they can't be bothered to you know have more thought of portability or things like that so even if, even if a program is let's say source available you know you might not necessarily be able to build it on freebsd or build it on another unix like operating system let alone try to run it you know for for those reasons so you know i haven't had to deal with them yet but i'm sure i'm going to do so at some point but uh, but those are those are personally my my use cases for playing around with this stuff <laughs> um i haven't i haven't really done was this week comparisons between between the, the same program so between the same program running in freebsd versus versus the same linux binary um just just because you know again like the use that that was not part of the use case for for me at least um, if um, I, I'm sure there have been folks who have um, who have done those comparisons in the past, but I but I was not one of those people. <laughs> I was not one of those people, and um, yeah. So there we go. We just uh, I, I I invoked make PKG with the with the, the SR flag. So install the uh, install the build dependencies, and then once we're done, just get rid of them. So while we were answering that uh, that little inquiry, uh, it uh, where, where's my pointer again? There we go. While we're doing so, uh, Pac-Man prompted again. You want to get rid of these? Yeah, get rid of these already. So, again, all in uh, that was all in the FreeBSD Pac-Man. However, though, remember how I said that we have the that that I had to port Pac-Man over, you know, or, or yeah, update Pac-Man on the FreeBSD side. So, 
let's actually run Pac-Man. You know, just so this is the FreeBSD one. Uh, okay, we have a couple of syncs that we have to do. Come on now. So for some for, for some reason, I guess you know, like compared to compared to the Arch Linux side, we have we actually have curl running concurrently when it was fetching stuff, fetching the databases, but also when there were um, when there were package updates, they actually fetch they actually fetch concurrently. It didn't it didn't do that on the Arch Linux side, but I don't really care too much. So there was nothing to update, and um, there's nothing to update, and yeah, it worked uh, it worked perfectly fine. Let's see here. Um, so, also generally speaking, uh, when I can pull up the browser window again, there we go. Let's see. So, a lot of these package managers, right? So, Arch, so Pac-Man. Um, if we want to, actually, let's go into the check out some of the source code while we still have a little bit of time. So, Pac-Man here. Might not be able to. I might not be able to find the find specifics here, but but generally speaking, a lot of these package managers doesn't really matter. At, at least at least with Pac-Man, but also uh, also Void Linux XPPS, I found that they've they actually include, um, or, or or rather they they make sure that they're uh, that it's actually portable between uh, all the different or, or as many different Unix-like systems as possible. So, you know, so. That makes it really easy to uh, to port Pac-Man to uh, so to to make it run on FreeBSD. That is, you know, so you know you got some Mison build. Um, I can't remember where where I saw the, the where specifically I saw the shims, but they do have some shims in here. Um, I definitely saw some shims in XBPS um, you know, to account for account for at least. Yeah, I, I saw some shims in the XPPS source code to account for the account for the other uh, Unix-like systems to at least, in theory, make it easier for us to port it over. Which um, that's actually my next uh, next project there. Whenever I get get some cycles available to continue working on Linux later stuff, is actually to uh, to try to see try to see if we can run run the uh, void muscle user land. Because of course most Linux distributions are going to use glibc, and but uh, a lot of us also know that glibc is a monstrosity, and uh, and so that's why Muscle exists. I mean, all, all the all the BSDs, you know, we have our own homegrown libcs. That's not going to change, I don't think. So you have to so you have to account for those, but it will be interesting to see, you know, like for next steps. Next steps, at least in my journey, but maybe, maybe, maybe some of you is, you know, if you get the bug and uh, try to figure out how to how to port XBPS over, get it to get that to run, configure the uh, void repositories, and uh, see how that goes. But um, yeah, so so that that that's really it. Just as long as you're able to, as long as you're able to port over the the package manager or, or whichever. Whichever bootstrap scripts or or whatever whatever way you need to bootstrap I'm a base set of packages you need to run you know to minimally run that distribution's user land you've already you've already solved half the puzzle the other half of course is running the programs you want to run but as far as actually getting that user land up and running you know that's that's half of it and um, so at least in in the Arch Linux case. You know, a separate we, we can do it without, or rather, we did it without patch strap. We just installed the FreeBSD Pac-Man and then just installed the base group. And then you're off to the races. See it root into it. Well, make sure you mount your stuff. See it root into it, and um, there you go. So that's really the, yeah. I don't really have any further demos here because because we don't because the, the graphics don't work. I got rid of the uh, like I said I got rid of the the uh, the CentOS stuff uh, because it's CentOS and um, yeah that's really that's really it. Just um, yeah, draw your three conclusions different Kubernetes and um, yeah, it does. It 
the 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 GUI the, the GUI does work when when it's on when you're using the CentOS when you're using the like the CentOS side of it that that I showed you before. So I, I haven't I haven't I haven't done any further tests. L like I said, my cycles have been very limited yeah. when when it comes to this stuff. But um, I I think in theory you you would probably want to do something like um, whatever that whatever that hack the um, whatever that hack in um, in Linux that you had to do to like get Optimus to work to, to get Nvidia. It was it was like you ran you ran like a Shadow X server, you know, for the Yes, yeah, yeah, that was it, yeah, 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 so like whatever Bumblebee had to do, so I, I think in theory that might, if, if you're going to do the, do the CA true, um, CA true side of things, if you have an existing X server, you probably have to do something similar to Bumblebee, but, but if you, but if you're doing it on the CentOS side, it's, it's already sharing that display variable, and so when I ran Quartus, when I ran, uh, when I ran, I think, multi-sim, it was just using the, the existing FreeBSD X server, and, um, yeah, what's up? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I, well, I, I, I wasn't saying like you know port Bumblebee itself. It was more just like do something similar to what like it, what Bumblebee. Well, B Bumblebee already does that that rootless thing anyway. So like, so Bumblebee, I, if I recall correctly, set when it, when it runs its X server, it sets its its um, display variable as like I think colon eight or something like that, and it and I believe it's run rootless and it and it's only activated when you actually tell tell a program to use the Nvidia um, use the Nvidia card to render. So. So 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 yeah, pretty much yeah. We're we're talking about the same thing essentially, just the the whole rootless, the whole rootless X and all that. But it'll it'll be interesting to see uh, see how we get how we have to operate when uh, when Wayland takes over the world even more. We'll see about that. <laughs> Anything else? Um, that is uh, so. FreeBSD does not have a sys. Um, that that is usually sim linked to. Uh, that's usually sim linked to the sys directory in the FreeBSD source code. Um, procfs in free. In fact, let's pull up the man page while we're at it, since we have some time. Um, let's do that in the FreeBSD side. Yes, we're in the FreeBSD side. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, I believe there should be a. Yes, so FreeBSD does have a procfs, but it, it's different than the Linux procfs. So, yes, see, here's the Linux side. Not sure if we if we have one. Yes, so it's procfs, FreeBSD procfs. Uh, this thing here, there's the whole, there's your description, all that stuff. FreeBSD ProcFS. It's it, it's different. That's why. See if we do. I'm not sure if we have a, a, a man page for this. Yes, we do. Yeah. So, yeah. See, the Linux ProcFS we have is LinProcFS, and you, you mount it the same way. Of course, the, the in the synopsis example, you, you mount it within the uh, the the Linux simulator hierarchy. Because of course that's where you use it, not in, not FreeBSD side. So yeah, so it should be the same uh, same file structure there. And um, yes, yeah, we don't. Yeah, FreeBSD doesn't have a sysfs, but we do emulate the, or we do have the Lin sysfs. Yeah, see Linux kernel objects file system, we, we do have that. Uh, again. Mounted 
in mounted in that hierarchy, not the not the FreeBSD one. <laughs> What's that? Um, I haven't had a chance to. We we have we do have Nick's. We do have the package or package manager in in the ports collection. Some folks have messed around with it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So that that one that one you probably you, you definitely want to uh, see it through because that's just gonna. But so. I mean, like, right, but it, it's just, you know, like, the, the Linux related, like, this is just, it, it's just a facility that we have within the FreeBSD base system. It doesn't actually restrict you as to, as to what you want to, what, what you end up wanting to run on it. It's just, we, it's just that we, we provide the, we provide the, the system call mapping, and it's up to you to figure out the rest on the, on the user, on the user name. I, I, w I wish I could have I, I could have gotten into the um, you know learn more while I was able to about more of the technical details, but that was not really where I was uh, where I was going with that because um, you know they the the folks who are who are, who are have been working on in the base system they're much farther along in terms of um, in terms of those details than I probably have the cycles available to. So what's up? All, all the BSDs are different. Are, are, are you, you have you have to think of all the BSDs as just completely different operating systems. You, you, you can't just you can't just lump them all into you know the same thing, one of the same thing. But um, um, I mean the um, I mean we, we do have jail actually jail we do have VNets and jails. We do have uh, we do, we do have a few different facilities for that. Um, you know for uh, especially especially in like a network network environment where like you know where you can't really you can't really set up like multiple uh you, or, or, or rather you're limited to that one physical adapter there, there, are, there are ways to do you know like the whole loop back loop back games with the firewall and things like that um we've got three choices of firewalls to do it with um pick one and um yeah it, it, it should be covered much of that should be covered in the handbook we actually try to make sure that the handbook is relatively comprehensive for those who are not the most not the most versed, but also to serve as a as a kind of a frame of reference to okay, like here's okay, so here's uh, here's a couple things that you need to pay attention to, and then if you want more details, okay, pull the manual. Yeah, so so it's it, and, and actually with those man pages, you know, like on the Linux later side, of course you got you got that. I think we have, I think we have one about the, we do, yeah, so there's our Linux API support uh, man page. Um, yeah, so this Linux, so this uh, Linux enable thing in rc.conf, so rc.conf is our, um, that's our service configuration file um, for, so like enable services, things like that. Um, the Linux service, all, all that does is just, uh, it, it just mounts or, or rather, auto mounts the um, the appropriate file systems. You don't. What's that? No, no, no. So like, so we don't. So I should probably back up about services. Um, 
we don't, obviously FreeBSD does not have systemd. We don't use OpenRC. Ours, we don't even, we don't even have sys, system five stuff. The, the BSDs continue to use the research Unix um, service manager is what we want to see. We, like, so system five, system five in it was never a thing in e even back in the four play days. So, so, so that's why, so, so that's why w when you're seeing all this, like, yes, this is still, this is still essentially the research Unix service lineage, if you will. So, but yes, this, this Linux, uh, this Linux service, all it does is, is mount file systems and, uh, and load the appropriate, um, load the appropriate kernel module. Because it is a, uh, it, it is one or two kernel modules depending on what you are, if it's a 32-bit or a 64-bit or things like that. Uh, so that, so th this one describes the ABI, yeah, so it described, you know, like path translation, you know, yeah, it, it does a whole path translation thing. Uh, so so that, that, that's where I was saying about the whole, you know, like, you know, like if you have, if you're in the CentOS environment and, you forget, and you're running a GUI program, let's say you're running a, a GTK program where you forget to install the themes, it's going to look like crap because you didn't install them. Uh, that, that's thanks to this. Like, even if you have the same exact themes configured, on the FreeBSD side, but you didn't install them on the on the Linux side. Tough luck. You gotta install them. Uh, yeah. So etc password. You know that's gonna. You know you, you have to. You, if you want to use a system one, or if you want to keep them separate, if you've got the ch root or not, you gotta deal with that. Uh, yeah, it describes a little dev bootstrap. Eventually, I'm gonna have uh, I'm gonna have a little description about the Arch Linux. Uh, the Arch Linux, or, or or perhaps even just make this a bit more, um, a bit more generic when it comes to just okay, just you can just use your, use the, use the distributions package manager, given that we ported it over to, um, our ports collection, and go from there. But uh, that's a future, that's a future problem, I think. And then, and then you can also, if you don't want the, um, if you don't want the Linux service to actually mount the file system, and you just want to load the kernel modules when your system starts up. You put that you you can put that in your uh, in your rc.com to disable the mounting. Uh, there's your okay yeah here we go sysctl variables. Uh, let's see so one of these is the there we go compat.linux.os release. That's where that's where the the default 